Thank you very much, uh, Padavi sir. Uh, so till the chief guest comes now, it's my turn to hold the audience. <laughs> so uh, first of all, before I begin, uh, it's a very special occasion for me because all the three speakers who spoke before me just now are all my teachers. So both Vas sir and Padmanabhan sir taught me soft skills in what was DMCS. Padavi Ram sir was my teacher in this very same auditorium actually. I used to attend his classes here. And thanks to them only, I'm a solid accountant today and I'm a cost accountant or whatever I've studied is only because of uh, teachers that uh, have preceded me. So it's a privilege to address this gathering along with them. So we can open the pictures. So my topic today is uh, tips to sure success in the examinations. So really speaking, before I start, I want to know how many people here are inter students, inter students about to write inter exam. How many are uh, final? How many foundation? Still many people not raised your hands. That means you are here for dinner, I think. <laughs> so, really speaking, uh, so uh, of course I am sure before you joined this course, uh, many many different uh, explanations you would have. What is CMA? Come again course, sir. You know, this is how many people feel. When you will pass, sir, so I started studying when I was 17 years old. What you are doing? Sir, still inter I am writing, sir. <laughs> so this sort of feeling is there. Different, different emotions, you know. There's this very funny video that I saw. Play <laughs> I don't know how many of you have seen this meme. So... <laughs> <laughs> so very commonly, you know, this is a very, very common conception that people have or a misconception, whatever you may say. You know, this is what they think of uh, CMA students. But what if I say, right now, let us assume you are in the position where you don't know what are the subjects also for your exam. I don't know what subjects are there. My father told register, I registered. One person told ah, CMA, ah, okay, CMA, I want to see it. CMA is here, okay, CMA. So, many people done that, but December you have the examination coming up. What if I say, today, from the end of this session that we have, up to December, for a person who doesn't even know the subjects, you can get a rank. How many of you say it's possible? Is it possible? Two hands. Put up that, I think one person already completed CMA. So, many of you think it's not possible. But what I'm here to tell you, is that it's very, very possible. It's extremely possible. Whether it is foundation, whether it's inter, whether it is final. Dinner today itself you can finish. No <laughs> but whether it is either of these three, you can easily finish it, provided you follow these tips and you tailor it a little bit. Sir just spoke about the importance of innovation. There's no one shoe fits all. But if you use these broad tips, I can guarantee you, you will not only pass, but you can get a rank also. So what are these tips? What are these tips you must follow? The first important thing is to prepare a timetable. Not many of us do it. Not many of us do it. But the first thing you must do is prepare a timetable to understand where are you today, where you need to go and you have a cut off date. So I think if it's the inter and final exams, your exams start on 10th, am I right? 10th of December, that also so many people don't know. <laughs> 10th of December your examination starts, so you know what is your end date. So till 10th of December you have time to prepare starting today. Let us assume nothing you have done so far. So starting today, you have time up to 10th of December. Can I plan and finish? So the first thing you must do is to put a timetable. So how many of you saw Jailer? Ah, how many hands? How many of you put timetable before you saw Jailer? Because if you are not if you are not put a timetable, you should watch only the trailer. You will not have time to watch Jailer. So honestly speaking, it's not that you won't have time to prepare for your exams. You will not have time to enjoy. But you must put a timetable to ensure that you have a track of your actions. Now since the chief guest has not yet come, I am going to give you an example. I literally prepared this today. It took me 15 minutes time. It took me just 15 minutes time 
to do what I'm going to show you now. And that's all the time that it need, you need to prepare a timetable. But that 15 minutes that you are going to spend preparing this timetable, or even if you spend 45 minutes or one hour, whatever, whatever time you are spending on that timetable is your investment. Because that is going to give you a guide as to how you are going to clear the exams. So what are you going to do? Let's take a practical example. Since anyway, a maximum number of students here are inter-students. I have taken the inter-subjects. So these are the new, sub new syllabus subjects. You modify it. If you want to put old, you put. You want to put final, you put. You want to put foundation, you put. But these are your list of subjects. And these are your dates. 10th December up to 17th of December you have your exam. Back to back. Every single day you have exams. So that means, if I am going to prepare for my next exam, after finishing one exam, I have less than one day time. I have to come back from the exam center. Then I have to rest because I will be a little tired. Then after that I have to wake up. I have to again gear my mind for the next subject, prepare, go, write the exam, do this repeatedly for seven days. So really speaking, if like BCom students or even law students, I must say, you can literally go and write the exam after studying one night before. Like that. That approach you can have for your general UG exams. For professional examinations, I am afraid that is not possible. Which means, with this timetable or with this examination schedule that you have, let us prepare a timetable now. Now, everyone has a strong subject or weak subject. Yes? So let us assume my weak subject was costing. Sorry sir, you took my classes. <laughs> so we left uh, like an intermission of jailer. We took a break in between the session. Now we can get back. Now, I just want some feedback. Now I have few tips, five or six tips are there. Should I finish the tips or should I do the how to prepare the timetable first? You can get a, how many saying I should do the timetable? Can you shout yes? Yes. 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 How many saying no? I scared to say no. <laughs> but okay, we'll continue the timetable because obviously it's a very very important thing. And I was when I wrapped up, I was apologizing to Patavi sir because he was my costing teacher during inter. So that was my hardest subject. Costing was my hardest subject. And like that, all of you will have some difficult subject. And you have to learn to plan for it. So now when you are planning for a timetable, you have to keep a couple of things in mind. Some of you may be working, you have the practical training. Some of you may not have the practical training. Before that itself, you are writing the exams. Whatever it may be, you have to plan for it. So practical training, obviously, you know, it can be challenging when you are planning. You know, three people died and went to heaven. No, one was an engineer, one was a CMA, other was a lawyer. So God first, he said, Mr. Engineer, come here. He said, yes, my Lord. He said, see, you have certified one building, which is very poorly constructed. And because of your wrong certification, that entire building collapsed. And people lost all their belongings, some of their loved ones, etc. So because of that, I am sending you to jail for, I am sending you to hell for 10 years. Then he said, Mr. Lawyer, come here. Yes, my lord. Because of you, so many rapists, so many people who are robbers, criminals, they are all safe and running on the road causing harm to others. So because of this, you have caused irreparable damage to the society. And because of that, I am sending you to hell for 10 years. Then my lord, why? Then finally he said, Mr. CMA, come here. Mr. CMA, you are certified. The management audit report of this company very poorly. And it's a fraudulent company. And because of your wrong certification, people have lost their entire funds, their lifelong savings have all gone to dust because of your poor certification. Because they trusted you and they believed you. And I am sending you to hell for eight and a half years. Immediately, that advocate said, My Lord, how is this fair? For him, ten years. For me, ten years. But for this fellow, only eight and a half years. He said, you are forgetting something. Now, CMA students have 15 month practical training that they have to complete. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a lighter note. But practical training has a lot of benefits, but it has certain challenges also, especially when it comes to your examination. So, when it comes to your examinations, we have to prepare two schedules. One is a weekly schedule and one is a daily schedule. Now, first thing you must know, I told you you have a cutoff. 
10th of December, your exams start. So if you start studying from today, you have exactly 118 days. So already some people, they are leaving, I think, once I said that 118 days, I'll go study, but you wait for two minutes. So 118 days means 17 weeks you have. Exactly 17 weeks time. So this 17 weeks, I have broadly split it up into what I think I would prepare if I was in your shoes. So I first start with my weak subject. Because then only I can gauge how I can do better, whether I should skip that group at all. Write only one group because you will not clear definitely. That sort of decisions will be taken at this point of time. Because when you draw up your weekly calendar, you will know exactly where the gaps are, what you need to prepare, how you need to address it. So here I started with costing and then I have prepared all the other subjects. I have given a fairly liberal amount. Even though 17 weeks, some of you may say is very less time. I think I have been fairly liberal time in covering the subjects. Remember I started off by saying zero. We don't know what the subjects are also. So now only you are coming to know what and all subjects are there and you are planning it. And despite planning this, you can see that 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I still have 5 weeks buffer time to do a revision also. So suppose you don't complete also, you still have 5 weeks time to do a revision. This is assuming you are writing both groups. Assuming you are writing both groups. Now, the next thing is your daily schedule. Now your daily schedule is very important. Because you have to put down, please note, you have to put down what is your plan for the day. Now you may say, how can I put the plan? My day is so unpredictable. Definitely there is going to be unpredictability. But you have to try to bring some structure. Now if you take, you are a person who has practical training, which means you are going to your office, you are getting yelled at your office. Sometimes you will say, I went late to the class, my teacher is yelling at me. I went to late to the office, my boss is yelling at me. I learned late to the house to have dinner, my mother is yelling at me, everywhere I am getting yelled at. You have to factor all that in. So when you are preparing your timetable, you must ensure that you are doing this. Now here for an example, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. study time. Okay, 6 a.m. little early. I have not got up 6 a.m. unless flight is there in a very long time. But otherwise, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. to study is very critical time. Nobody will be up. Your mother will not come and yell at you. Come help me fold the clothes, all those things you will not have. The train time you have to figure out. Now the 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. is an example. For you it may be some other time. I used to prefer studying at night. So I used to stay late at night, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock and I used to study because I could not wake up in the morning. Each of you have a different style of doing it. So what you have to do, figure out what are your key study hours. Plan that around the rest of your day. Now control the controllables. Going to office is not controllable. It's a decision you have to do. If you have to finish the course, you have to finish your practical training. If you have to earn money, you have to do that. So therefore, control what you can control, which is your sleeping time, your waking up time, your time apart from your office time, etc. So here, I pretty much factored in lot of effects, travel time, etc. One big difference or rather one big advantage that is there today, that was not there six years back also, is when you travel, you can listen to lectures on YouTube. You have enough speakers, it may not be tailored to your specific limit. Oh, I like this teacher only. I like his approach only. Or I like this person. She is a very good uh, you know, person who explains all these aspects. You may not have that. But whoever is there, something you can listen to. So whether you are on the bus, whether you are on the train, Bluetooth headphones you can buy. You are getting for 300 rupees today on Amazon. You can have a smartphone. I think all of you have it. YouTube you have. 399 Geo plan is there. With all of this, every month, every day you can listen to it. The choice is yours. You may not feel like it, but if you are clear on that 10th of December date and you are clear on getting a rank or passing the exam, these are the efforts that are involved in it. Now, of course, as I told you, this is with the practical training, but without the practical training, you know, the entire day becomes your day. So it's much more easier for you to plan. I'm not going into the detail, but I will share this presentation and all of you can, you know, use it as a, a, a you know, as a benchmark for you and go ahead with it. But this took me just 15 minutes to do. So I'm sure all of you will spend that 15 minutes time or whatever little extra time you need to plan your schedule. This is the first step in doing it. And the second step is following it. It's going to be very hard to do it. And that brings me to tip number two, be consistent. Consistency is the most critical thing in life. You are going to have good days, you are going to have bad days. Some days you are not going to be able to study at all. But you must get into the routine. Do you know who this is? Can you shout out the answer? Messi. Messi. 
Do you know who Messi is hugging? Does anybody know who Messi is hugging over here? So he is a goalkeeper for Argentina. His name is Emi Martinez. Now this Emi Martinez, I'm going to show you one video. Sir, can you just play the video? Now he was the very famous keeper who won the World Cup for Argentina. But here you can see, when the final penalty kick is taken, everyone is running to whoever took the penalty kick. But the captain of the team, Lionel Messi, he is running to Emi Martinez because it means that much to him. Because he won the World Cup thanks to this person. And he's hugging, they're crying, full of tears, their eyes. But my story here is not about the World Cup. My story is about this Emi Martinez. Everyone here knows Messi. That's why you all shouted Messi, Messi. But what's the story of Martinez? You know, Martinez started playing football in 2007. And in the last 10 years, from 2007, up to 2020, he played a grand total of 50 games. Just 50 games in more than 10 years. At the same time, Messi was playing 60 games every year. Every season he was playing 60 games. Normal goalkeeper will play 60 to 70 games in every year. But this person, in over 12 years, he played less than 50 games. And in less than 3 years from that time, he's won the World Cup. So obviously everyone was very surprised. Oh, what happened? That three years, what did you do that was different? When he was interviewed, he said one thing. He said, I didn't do anything different. I just kept doing the same thing over and over again. And when my chance came, I took it. Now for him, the chance was very uncertain. It came very suddenly. But for all of you, the chance is very certain. It's December 10th. So the critical thing that you must all do is learn to be consistent. There may be, of course, miscommunications, incidents that may not go your way. But try to ensure that day by day you do the consistency. I remember, you know, uh, Sir had a very wonderful slide earlier on, which is, uh, you talk about <coughs> intensity versus, you know, consistency. Even if you go to the gym, today I am going to the gym. I am working out four hours today. Yeah, full lifting weights, full running on the gym, everything, treadmill, everything done. Then entire week I am relaxing. Whereas another person is going for 40 minutes every day. Which is more effective? 100% the person who is doing 40 minutes every day. Because it's consistency. Examination is a lot to do with your routine and your consistency. Even if you are busy in the day. Even if you are having just one hour time. You are planned in your timetable. Three hours I'll study. But for whatever reason you are left with only one hour. What will you say? Only one hour left. Why I should study that one hour? I'll watch YouTube. Or I'll you know, do something else, I'll watch some TV. I think you have to get out of that mindset and get into the consistency mindset. The moment you start doing, now if you start studying today, do you think your three hours will be effective, super effective three hours? No, because we are not used to that. We have not prepared our mind to be preparation in that exam zone. That itself will take you three or four days to start getting into the zone. And that's why this consistency aspect is very important. And I use the story of Yemi Martinez over here. Tip number three, put pen to paper. And I'll tell you a story of one of the students that uh, I had coached. Now, this person was one of the brightest students I knew. Brightest. So smart that even during the classes or even during when we were, you know, working together on engagements, etc. Before the problem itself, you know, he will come with a solution. He is that smart. So what happened when he was preparing for the exams? He used to, because he did not have time, he did not put pen to paper, but he used to solve in his mind. So he used to have the questions, he used to read the question, he used to have the answer also next to him, and he used to study the answer to see, okay, am I processing step by step what I am doing, correct? He is perfect. And he was so good, he would be clarifying doubts, etc. This student, finally when the exam results came, in that subject where he is an expert at, he got only 28. He failed the exam. He got only 28 in that. And then we had to do the introspection. Why did this happen? Why did you get 28? You are so, so smart. And there is no doubt about it. He knew everything subject-wise, not mugging. You know, there is a very famous story. Obama, he went to, he, he called the Japanese Prime Minister to visit him. He said, please come. So the Japanese Prime Minister, he is not very fluent in English. So he is speaking with this translator. He is saying, tell me what I should say. He will say, when you are going to meet Obama, he will say, you should say, hello, how, how are you? He'll say, I'm fine. How about you? You should say, yes, me too. So the entire flight, he'll be practicing. 
Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Yes, me too. Yes, me too. Finally, they land in the US. Obama and his wife are there to greet him. And he comes down the stairs. But instead of saying, hello, how are you? He says, hello, who are you? <laughs> he says, hello, who are you? So Obama is a little shocked. But he thinks that he is playing a joke on him. He thinks it's a prank. So he's a very witty person, no, Obama. So he says, hello, who are you? He says, I'm Michelle Obama's husband. But Prime Minister has mugged and come. No, he says, yes, me too. So, <laughs> so sometimes this mugging aspect happens. But this student that I'm talking about, not even mugging. Clear knowledge. So we have to understand what went wrong. How did you get uh, such a, it's not even just a miss like 38, 39, but 28. It's a clear lack, you know, an application. So what happened, what we came to know, is that when he was solving with his mind, he would look at the answer to check if his thought process was correct. But he didn't know how to get started. When you have that problem, should I first draw balance sheet, should I first draw PNL, or is there any equations that I need to solve? What is the other sub-schedules that I have to fill? All those little, little aspects are things that you'll understand when you put pen to paper. Another student, what, another example of why not putting pen to paper, not putting pen to paper often enough, is the time management. How many of you have felt not enough time, exam finished very quickly, especially for accounts, costing, all of these paper you would have felt, time is not enough, I was not able to complete, I missed 12. So putting pen to paper is one of the most important things. And the second reason I'll tell you why, by the time many of you write an exam, your inter or your final, the last time you would have written an exam would have been one and a half or two years before. You have gone out of the habit of writing. So therefore, it's very, very critical for you to learn how to do it. In fact, I'll tell you another story. The handwriting. But they should understand what you are writing, no? It's like when a doctor gives a prescription, he'll say you go to the pharmacy and you get it. This pharmacy you go. That pharmacist will understand that handwriting. Once by mistake, I didn't go to that pharmacy. I went to a totally different pharmacy. I said I had fever, he gave some tablets. I went and told him I want these tablets. He said what is the name? Because it's a different pharmacy. So I said sir, you give me this inky stuff, by stuff. Then it came to know it's a kidney failure tablet. So actually, that doctor handwriting very unique. Only that pharmacist will understand. But for us, when we write our exam paper, that pharmacist is not going to correct it. You are going to have normal people who are correcting your exam paper. So even your handwriting is something which is very, very important. The story of a person, you will not believe, she was preparing for the examination. Her handwriting was not good enough. She went and joined handwriting classes. Handwriting classes. So she was attending class during a final examination with five-year-old students, six-year-old kids in the handwriting class. And she ended up getting a rank. She's actually on the stage. She's the chairperson. So Divya is a person who got the rank actually and she went for handwriting classes with five-year-olds. But it made a difference. So putting pen to paper is a very, very critical aspect in for you to do it. It may not be something that strikes you in the mind. Normal subject, written theory subjects, you can write it. But when it comes to solving problems, putting pen to paper is very, very important. Revision, most important thing. Sir, I studied, but I could not pass. So one thing that I found for myself when I prepare for examinations, if I study once, it's not adequate. It's simply not adequate. I need to revise. Not once or twice, I need to revise at least three to four times. Only if I re revise three to four times, 60% memory I'll have. Some people may be very smart, one time they'll study, two times they'll study, they'll be able to do it. But you have to gear, or rather you have to understand, what is your memory retention? How much time you need to spend on revision? Do you need two revisions? Do you need three revisions? How many times you need to revise to, re to remember the subject? And accordingly, you need to plan for it. So it's a very, very important aspect you need to consider when you're putting your timetable and when you're preparing for your exams. As I told you, on the days of the exams, seven days continuously you have exams, having short notes, list of formula that you are writing. You have to write that down because you will only know what is important for you. You can't take somebody else's notes and do it. Because while the subject content may be what is important, but it's in the view of their eyes, not your eyes. So it's very important that you prepare your short notes, prepare enough notes for you to do the revision and keep that in mind when you are planning for your examinations.
final tip. How many of you have done this? Gopal Puram Center has 50% pass percentage. We have to get that, that center. If I don't get that center, then gone. Then play, pray at Hanuman Temple in Alvarpet. 60 days you go, morning, evening you go, 100% you will pass the exam. Then moderation. This time they are going to moderate the results. So even if you pass, no, they are going to make you fail. So all these are the things that all students will discuss. But these are things which 95% of the time they are not true. 5% of the time if they are true also, you cannot make an impact with it. Control the controllables. You cannot control all of this by going to God morning, evening. Ultimately, he will do what he feels is right only. So if you want, you go whatever you believe. If you can pray in your house also, you can pray. But these are all beliefs. These are not any truths to it. The only truth is believing in yourself. So you are the only person who can make the difference. So I would highly suggest, think positively. It may be a general cliche, what you are saying. Drink positively, you must always do good things, you must never do something bad. All of this we have heard. But when it comes to your examinations, especially your professional examinations, CMA, CEA, CS, whatever it is, thinking positively is a very, very important thing. You know, they always say, when a mouse looks into the mirror, it looks like a lion. So that's how you must feel. You must feel like that lion. When you are preparing for this exam, there should be no thought process at no single point of time. Should you ever consider that I could fail? Maybe you fail, that is fine. But you cannot go into the exams with that thought process of defeat. You must only go into it with a positive attitude. And only then, you know, they always say, you reach for the sky to touch the stars. So you have to always aim for the highest aim. So if you aim for a rank, you will definitely pass. If you aim for exemption, you will definitely pass. If I aim for 40 marks, if I get it, I am happy. But if I don't, that means I am falling short. So always keep your expectations high. And as I, as I said, most important thing, believe strongly in yourself. Now these are only short tips. I'm sure you'll have to modify them accordingly to, you know, how to suit your specific expectations. And uh, without a shred of doubt, I'm sure if you follow all of these tips, you'll all not only clear the rank, exam, you can get a rank. You may think how in a room of 1,600 people, all of us will get ranks. You may get it, so you must try. So wishing you all all the very best and uh, thank you very much. Over to the audience.